Coronary circulation means circulation through the heart itself. Heart is supplied by two coronaries that is left and right. In 50% of the population right coronary artery carries major blood supply to the heart whereas 20% individuals left coronary artery is dominant. In the rest 30% both arteries are dominant. They are uh, equally dominant. This diagram showing the coronary circulation where it is supplied by importantly the left coronary artery and the right coronary artery. Right coronary artery continues as a circumflex artery and also it gives anterior interventricular artery whereas right ventricular right coronary artery gives a posterior interventricular artery and uh, right coronary artery it is going to mainly supply the right ventricle whereas right coronary artery is going to mainly sub supply the left ventricle and the septum. The coronary sinus and anterior cardiac veins drain the blood ultimately into right atrium. Some quantity of blood enters directly into cardiac chambers via arteriosinusoidal vessels and arteriolumenal vessels and the Bayesian system of veins. Coronary blood flow in humans can be measured by Ketis or nitrous oxide technique that is based on fixed principle and also by radionuclide utilization technique and coronary angiography. Some of the special features of coronary circulation are it, it supplies the heart itself. The coronary blood flow at rest is around 250 ml per minute that is 5% of the cardiac output. In majority of people one artery is dominant to other. The vessels are subjected to force of myocardial contraction and are compressed during systole. And unlike other vascular bed, it is mainly perfused during diastole. That is, during diastole, cardiac muscle relaxes and it will not obstruct the blood flow through left ventricular muscle capillaries. And oxygen extraction is highest in this bed. Oxygen content of the arterial blood is around uh, 19 ml percent and oxygen content of venous blood is 6.7 ml percent. About 13 ml is utilized in the heart. In the other tissues, it is around just 5 ml. Coefficient of oxygen utilization is almost 70%, whereas it is about 20% in all other tissues. So, increased blood flow is needed. This is a disadvantage for persons with any block in the blood vessels. On exertion, the part uh, with decreased blood flow will get necrosis and MI occurs. Collateral circulation is normally not very important but may develop in chronic coronary artery disease. The diameter of the muscle uh, is less and so uh, the high capillary density. The change in the blood flow in different phases of uh, cardiac cycle occurs. Coronary circulation shows reactive hyperemia which means increased blood flow to the part following a temporary obstruction of flow. And uh, there is autoregulation even if uh, there is a change in the pressure that is in between 60 to 160 mm of mercury, there is no change in coronary blood flow. So this is achieved through autoregulation. And metabolic factors are important for controlling the blood flow. So this diagram showing the coronary circulation in the left coronary artery and the right coronary artery during the different phases of cardiac cycle you can see uh, during the systole the blood flow is reduced and during diastasis the blood flow is, is increased compared to the right coronary artery. Factors regulating coronary blood flow. The rate of metabolism, that is local muscle metabolism, is the primary control of coronary blood flow. Higher the metabolic rate, higher the oxygen demand and coronary blood flow increases. Due to the increased metabolism, there will be oxygen lack and increased concentration of carbon dioxide, H plus ion, potassium, adenine, lactate and these produce profound vasodilatation. Perfusion pressure, more the perfusion pressure, more is the blood flow. But 
uh, it up to a limit only this occurs due to the auto regulation in coronary circulation in the systemic pressure which ranges uh, between 60 to 150 mm of mercury the coronary blood flow remains constant uh, if coronary activity remains constant coronary perfusion pressure mainly depends on diastolic blood pressure in the aorta the effect of ventricular contraction the vessels which are situated within the myocardium are compressed during myocardial contraction during diastole the cardiac muscle relaxes and no longer obstructs the blood flow through the left ventricular muscle capillaries so that blood flow rapidly during all or of diastole since blood pressure between uh, aorta and left ventricle is very small during systole therefore blood flow to the sub endocardial portion of left ventricle uh, occurs only in diastole however the pressure difference is more in the superficial portion of left ventricle to permit some flow in this region throughout the cardiac cycle while blood flow to the right ventricle uh, and atria occurs both during systole and diastole so this is overall coronary blood flow to the myocardium you can see that it drastically decreases during systole and it increases during diastole because there is no blood flow during systole in the sub endocardial portion of uh, left ventricle this portion of left ventricle is more prone for myocardial infarction neural influence the stimulation of autonomic nerves influence coronary blood flow both directly and indirectly the direct effect results from the action of neurotransmitter acetylcholine uh, which is a parasympathetic and norepinephrine epinephrine on uh, epinephrine which is a sympathetic on the coronary uh, vessels themselves the indirect effect that is uh, results from secondary changes in the coronary blood flow caused by increased or decreased activity of the heart acetylcholine has a direct effect to dilate coronary arteries thus it increases the